Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell Games. I'm Nick McDowell, and today we're playing part one of Convoy 13 No Reply, the 10th mission in the NATO campaign in Naval War Arctic Circle. Naval War Arctic Circle is based on a hypothetical Great Arctic War set in 2030 and fought in the North Atlantic, Arctic, Baltic, and the North Sea. The NATO campaign covers the Great Arctic War as experienced from the Northern Partnership and NATO alliances. In Convoy 13 No Reply, we must defend NATO convoys against attacks. Each mission starts with a news article to give us some context. NATO invokes Article 5 in Arctic War. Green light to support UK, Scandinavia, Netherlands in war against Russia. The decision approves measures which will add weight to earlier pledges of solidarity and clears the way for the 23 Allies military to be deployed in Europe and the North Atlantic Ocean, according to a statement from NATO Secretary General Richter. Please pause the video if you'd like to read the full article, and while you're doing so, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more great strategy and tactics content. Episode 10, Convoy 13, No Reply. Description. Major reinforcements are being transported across the Atlantic to reach the operations theatre. Undoubtedly, the enemy knows that we are here. Long-range bombers, surface ships, and not the least, submarines, are a major threat to the convoys. Objectives? Defend the convoys. And so we begin. We must sink at least two enemy surface combatants. We must not lose five or more surface combatants. The enemy has Keflavik Air Base in occupied Iceland. Let's review our forces. The USS Texas, a Virginia-class submarine, has 12 Tomahawk land attack missiles and 26 Mark 48 ADCAP torpedoes. It has an A and BQQ-5 bow-mounted spherical array sonar with a range of 4 nautical miles. It also has a TB-29 towed array sonar. Let's deploy the sonar. The USS Virginia has a similar loadout. The Texas and the Virginia transited Baffin Bay west of Greenland in the last episode. Once again, we will deploy the towed array sonar. This is RAF Lossiemouth in northern Scotland. It has eight F-22 Raptor air superiority fighters. Let's send two on a fighter patrol towards occupied Iceland. Lossiemouth also has Boeing KC-767 refuelling tanker aircraft, Boeing P-8A Poseidon maritime patrol aircraft in ASW and naval strike profiles, and two Boeing E-3 Sentry AWACS aircraft. Let's launch one for situational awareness over the Western Isles of Scotland. Let's also put on an ASW patrol on standby west of Scotland. This is Convoy 12. It is heading to the UK. The lead ship is the Philippine Sea, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser. It has 56 RIM-66 standard MRSM-2 missiles with a range of 90 nautical miles against air targets.
eight Harpoon missiles with 150 nautical mile range against surface targets. 16 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles with a range of 27 nautical miles against air targets. 20 Mark 54 lightweight hybrid torpedoes against submarines. A Phalanx close-in weapon system. 10 Tomahawk TLAM C with 810 nautical mile range against land targets. 8 RUM 129 vertical launched anti submarine rockets with 12 nautical miles range against submarines. And a Mark 45 5 inch gun. Next in the formation is the Bonhom Richard, a WASP class escort carrier. It has 92 RIM 116 rolling airframe missiles with 5 nautical mile range against air targets, a phalanx close in weapon system, and 24 Sea Sparrow missiles with 10 nautical mile range against air targets. On the flight deck are 6 ASW helicopters, 6 naval strike helicopters, 6 F 35B Lightning II air superiority fighters. We will launch two fighters on patrol down our primary air threat axis towards Iceland. Off they go. The Bonhomme Richard has an ANSPS 48E air search radar and surface search radar. We will not activate these. Next in the convoy is the Bulkley, an Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer. This has 56 SM2 missiles. Twenty Harpoon anti-shipping missiles, sixteen Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, a Mark Forty Five five inch gun, a Phalanx close in weapon system, ten Tomahawk TLMC. 8 RUM-129 vertical launched anti-submarine rockets and 20 Mark 54 lightweight hybrid torpedoes against submarines. The Bulkley has an ANSPY 1D radar for air and surface search and an SQS-53 sonar which we will activate. These surface assets are all protecting an oil tanker. It is almost five days until the convoy makes port, travelling at about 15 kilometres per hour. Already airborne, an E3 Sentry AWACS is providing situational awareness to NATO forces. It increases altitude and slows down for a long patrol. It has an ANAPY Band 1 and Band 2 radar with 324 nautical mile range and an infrared seeker for self-defence. Let's activate the radar. Straight away, it detects a fixed-wing aircraft large contact east of the convoys. This could be an enemy AEWC aircraft, or a bomber, or a maritime patrol aircraft. The carrier task force immediately scrambles two F-35C Lightnings from the flight deck to intercept. The aircraft launch, but are not yet within AMRAM range. The enemy aircraft has been detected, but not identified. Back to the carrier task force. This is centred on the Theodore Roosevelt, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. In the last mission, the Teddy Roosevelt task force transited through Baffin Bay and the Davis Strait west of Greenland into the North Atlantic. The Teddy Roosevelt has 196 RIM 116 rolling airframe missiles with a range of 5 nautical miles against air targets, a phalanx close in weapon system, and 24 Sea Sparrow missiles with 10 nautical mile range against air targets. 
Sensors include an ANSPS 48E air search radar and an ANSPS 49 air search radar. Over to the flight deck, it has eight F-35C with two already on an intercept mission. Another six are configured for naval strike and one for aerial refueling. Four Boeing F-18E Super Hornets, four Super Hornets configured for naval strike, two Growler electronic attack aircraft, two Grumman E-2 Hawkeyes, two Sikorsky SH-60B Seahawks for ASW missions, two MQ-9 Mariner UAV with Hellfires, and two M47B Pegasus UCAV with Kongsberg Joint Strike Missiles. Second vessel is the San Jacinto, a Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser. It has 56 RIM-66 standard MRSM-2 missiles, eight Harpoon missiles, 16 Evolve Sea Sparrow missiles, 20 Mark 54 lightweight hybrid torpedoes, a Phalanx close-in weapon system, 10 Tomahawk TLMC, 8 RUM-129 vertical launch anti-submarine rockets, and a Mark 45 5-inch gun. The San Jacinto has an ANSPY-1D air search radar, an ANSQS-53 sonar, which we will activate, and an SQR-19 towed array sonar, which we will deploy. Also in the convoy is the Winston S. Churchill, an Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer. This has 56 SM-2 missiles, 20 Harpoon anti-shipping missiles, 16 Evolve Sea Sparrow missiles, 45 5 inch gun, a phalanx close in weapon system, 10 Tomahawk T Lamb C, 8 RUM 129 vertical launch anti submarine rockets, and 20 Mark 54 lightweight hybrid torpedoes against submarines. We will activate the ANSQS 53 sonar but not the ANSPY-1D air search radar. The Lassen, damaged in the previous episode, is repaired now. An Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer, it has a similar loadout to the Winston S. Churchill. We will also activate the sonar. The Howard was sunk in the last episode by a submarine launched torpedo. It has been replaced in this episode with an identical sister ship, a twin sister named Howard. An Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer, it also has a similar loadout to the Winston S. Churchill. We will also activate the sonar to scare away the whales. Finally, the Lake Champlain. A Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser, it has the same loadout as the San Jacinto. It also has two helicopters.
Again, we will activate the ANSQS-53 sonar and deploy the ANSQR-19 towed array sonar, but not the ANSPY-1D air and surface search radar. The F-35 from the Bonhomme Richard are still out of AMRAAM range, but vectored to intercept the aircraft to the east, which has been identified as a Barrier of A-50U Schmel, airborne and early warning control aircraft. This aircraft will give the enemy situational awareness on the location of our ships and planes, and its destruction is a priority. Over to Canadian Forces Goose Bay in Labrador, Canada. It has an ANMPQ-64 Sentinel radar. In the hangars are a mix of Boeing P-8A Poseidon, AWACS, F-35A Lightning Air Superiority Fighters, and a refuelling tanker. Let's launch the Boeing E-3 Sentry AWACS aircraft to improve situational awareness over Goose Bay, particularly if the enemy launch land attack munitions. The sentry takes off, goes to high altitude, and activates its sensors. Then it sets a patrol pattern west of the airbase. A single F-35 launches on a combat air patrol to the east to protect the AWACS. A Poseidon also launches to a patrol pattern to the east. Back at the convoys, there have been additional aircraft detections. Time to launch more air superiority fighters and deny the enemy their situational awareness. The aircraft out of Lossiemouth are well on their way to their patrol positions. The sentry moves to a new waypoint, increases altitude, and slows down for a long patrol. It activates its ANSPY Band 1-2 air search radar. The Poseidon moves to a new patrol pattern in front of the carrier group. The Chamel is still outside AMRAM range. Time for local ASW defence. The Nimitz launches Seahawks. One to the front starboard. One in front. And one to port. Convoy 12 also commences ASW operations. One helicopter ahead. One to port.
the Bonhomme Richard in Convoy 12 launches another pair of Lightning at an inbound bomber pair. The bombers are Tupolev Tu-160 Blackjack strategic bombers. They seem to be heading directly toward the convoy. It is reasonable to assume a missile strike will follow. In naval strike mode, they carry KH-15 missiles. These are beautiful aircraft, but deadly. The F-35 from the Teddy Roosevelt are now in AMRAAM range and launch against the unidentified enemy aircraft to the east. Let's move now to Convoy 13, after which the episode is named. Formation lead is the Princeton, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser. It has the same loadout as the San Jacinto and Lake Champlain. It has 56 RIM-66 standard MRSM-2 missiles, 8 Harpoon missiles, 16 Evolve Sea Sparrow missiles, 20 Mark 54 lightweight hybrid torpedoes, a Phalanx close-in weapon system, 10 Tomahawk TLAM-C, 8 RUM-129 vertical launch anti-submarine rockets and a Mark 45 5-inch gun. Let's activate the ANSQS-53 sonar and deploy the ANSQR-19 towed array sonar. Before we continue, the AMRAM are closing in on the air threat. It has now been identified as an Illusion Il-78 tanker aircraft. The tanker can give greater persistence to fighters, so its destruction will force any fighters to return to Keflavik more frequently, keeping them out of the fight for longer. but the tanker evades the missiles, so the fighters re-engage with two more missiles. Shoot, shoot, look, as they say. The tanker evades these as well. To the north, the first pair of fighters from the Bonhomme Richard move to intercept the Schmel, but are still out of AMRAM range. The second pair of fighters are closing on the two 160s. They are out of AMRAM range, but one of the planes activates its ANAPG-81 radar. This might cause the 2160 to break off. A third pair of AMRAM is closing the tanker aircraft. Incoming missile warning. A Vimple AA missile. 
enemy fighters are about. The Teddy Roosevelt's ASW screen is almost in position. They drop to 10 metres, hover, and deploy dipping sonar. The Illusion tanker evades the next set of missiles. The F-35 evade the Vimple AA missiles, but are out of fuel and return to the Bonham Richard. The escort carrier launches another pair of fighters to intercept the two 160s. and the Teddy Roosevelt launches two Super Hornets after the two 160s. So far we have introduced friendly forces, launched numerous AMRAM against an Il-78 tanker that refuses to die, and dodged an incoming anti-aircraft missile. We have also set up the ASW screen for the three convoys. But can we down the L-78, destroy the Beriev, and interdict the bombers? All will be revealed in the next episode. As always, thanks for watching. For more Naval War Arctic Circle content, check out the NATO campaign and Jersey Blockade playlists on our channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.